No. Absolutely not. You're wise men from afar. You're bringing gold, frankincense. You're following a star that's moving, not in a typical direction. You're there in a manger, and it's clear that this is a special child. Imagine what it must have been to be Simeon or Anna and know that this child wasn't just going to change your world, but was going to change the entire world. Get a sense of wow this Christmas. Get a sense of not just expectation, but get a, a, a sense of it's already happened. Um, and then after you become a marveler, become a mover. Become a mover. Look at verse 27 and verse 38. Verse 27, moved by the Spirit. Simeon went into the temple courts. He was moved by the Spirit. The, 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 the Holy Spirit told him to go at that time, to that place, to see that Savior. Now down to 38. Coming up to them at that very moment, she knew when to move in that temple. Even though she was there all the time, the temple was a big place. The Holy Spirit told her when to move, where to move in the temple. And at that very moment, she moved over to them and she gave thanks to God because both Anna and Simeon were movers. When the Holy Spirit prompted them to move, they moved. And I wonder what had happened had they not responded. Oh God, it's me and I'm leaving work and, you know, that, that guy's over there and I feel your, your spirit's kind of prompting me to Ask him how he's doing, but I don't have time because I'm going to be late for supper and my wife's going to give me a hard time if I'm late for supper. So maybe next time. Unmoved. Lori and I used to have a really difficult time because being a pastor's wife is a real um, pain in the derriere, to put it politely. I was trying to think of, oh, I'm in trouble, I got it, oh boy. Uh, because the phone will ring, and I will go. Um, and the first few years of our marriage, when I was a youth pastor, um, she wasn't prepared for it. We had discussed it. We had prepared a strategy for it. We had. Uh, said, well, if this happens, then we'll do this later on. Uh, and so we had a number of really bad moments during the first few years of me being a pastor and her being a pastor's wife. But then after that, we came to an agreement that if something happened, then we would carve time later on, and there was no need for apologies because we were both called. We were both moved. Now, just because you're not a pastor, men or ladies, does not mean you're both called to be moved. Okay? Uh, Lori had an operation on her ear. I had booked off the entire weekend from work. I was there. She had had the operation. She was in tears. She was in pain. This was in Hawaii several years ago. My cell phone rang. Someone in the church's daughter had committed suicide. Lori stopped crying. She looked at me. She gave me a kiss. She said, go. And I moved. But I didn't move before she did. You have to understand, if we are going to be Christians to this world, men and women, children and parents, you are all being called to move together. Now, I'm, just, I'm not, ladies, I'm not giving your husbands permission to go uh, watch football every Sunday without you because I moved to go hang out with the guys. That's not what I'm talking about. But if they're going to hang out with the guy because the guy's having a problem in his marriage, or because of this or that, and, and don't ask him for details. Okay, that's not fair. 
that guy or whoever is opening up to him in a special bond of relationship. Trust your husbands, trust your children, trust your parents. Let's move, be movers together. And yes, I, I'm going way off script, I know that. I don't even know where I am anymore. Oh, here I am. When God prompts you to do something, when God prompts you to move, you need to do it. You have to, it might mean salvation for that person. It might mean salvation for you. Every month, I invite you to come know Jesus as your Savior. Maybe you've been moved, but you just haven't moved. Being moved might mean your salvation. It might mean surrender. I talked about sin. Maybe you need to surrender some sin. Maybe the Spirit wants you to be more involved in this church or in serving others. Maybe God is asking you to do something today as you hear me talking. Like, oh, maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. Have you invited someone to your small group? Have you invited someone to church? Should you, should you not? Are you feeling called to move? Are you willing to move? Don't procrastinate when God says to you, Simeon, or to you, Anna, it's time to move. I'm struck by what Simeon told Mary in verse 34, and it must have taken her breath away. This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many. Ouch. And to be a sign that will be spoken against. And that's not really a Christmas fun greeting, is it? Here's this old man that has just sung praises, and now he says to you, Mom, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and be a sign that will be spoken against. That's not really fun. Simeon isn't exactly saying Merry Christmas and a happy, happy, happy new year. Instead, he pauses and <clears throat> clears his throat and tells her that Christmas will never be merry and the new year will never be happy until people get moving and surrender their lives to Christ. Because the truth is, Christmas splits people into two camps. Since Jesus has entered the world, he has divided the human race, and Jesus will cause the falling and the suffering of many. Because of who Jesus is and what he came to do, he forces people to make a decision about him. Jesus is either a rock that you build your life upon, and you rise, or he's a rock that you stumble over and you fall. This Christmas, Jesus is calling on you to make a decision based upon your willingness to move and respond to him, either rising or falling, depending on the decision that you make. And as you work on becoming a marveler, you can't help but becoming movers, which leads us to the last action step in Anna and Simeon's passage, become a, say that last word with me. Messenger. Remember what verse 38 said? She gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Do you have family and friends who have been caught up in preparation for Christmas? Face it, we all do. In all probability, most of us do. And maybe their anticipation and longings really represent an inner search for comfort and forgiveness. Those things that only Jesus provides. Church, God wants each of us, each one of you, to be messengers of the Christmas story. And as we become marvelers, the wonders of Christmas will astonish us. And as we become movers, our needs for comfort and forgiveness will be met. And as we take the role of messenger seriously, we'll be in a position to introduce them to Christ, the real Christ, not the Christmas present Christ, but the Christ Christ. Because Jesus doesn't make Christmas Christmas. Jesus makes the holidays holy days. 
When someone says happy holidays to you, you can now say instead of Merry Christmas in return, you know, because I, I, I used to get irritated when people said happy holidays to me because it meant to me that they didn't want to say Merry Christmas. So I smiled sarcastically back and I went, Merry Christmas. Well, this year, this year I started saying happy holy days and it really confuses people. It even gets them to ask questions. Try it. It's awesome. What do you mean, happy holy days? Well, Jesus Christ was born, and then later on he died, and he rose again for my sin. Oh, 